Welcome to Big Paws Little Paws Home Grooming Demonstration. So we're all now in COVID lockdown. So I think it's really important that everyone understand how to effectively brush and comb your dogs. So we have uh, Teddy here, my Bedlington Terrier. Um, he has a few knots because um, I haven't really brushed him properly at the moment. Uh, so we're going to start. Um, first of all, we'll go through the tools that we're going to be using. Um, if Teddy stands there, we're going to go through the tools we're using. So I always recommend a soft pin slicker brush because a soft pin is usually uh, good for all dogs and they won't fight the, the brushes. So anything that looks like either of these two, they're both the same thing. They're just different shapes. So I'll show you those two. Uh, and a fine tooth comb. So. So this one is quite fine. Um, I do have a variety of different combs. I always recommend combs that have two sections, a wide section and a fine section. Uh, any of these are really good. So uh, it's personal choice on what you want to use. Teddy has a very fine coat. So for me, the really fine comb is the option for him. But you guys are obviously going to use whatever you've got. With a long-haired dog too, it's really important that you use a spray, whether it be just water, so you can put water in a spray bottle and lightly mist as such over the coat before brushing. Then you'll get your brush and you'll brush all the way through, um, systematically going through each section of the coat. Paying particular attention to this curved bit in the leg here. So when I do that, I'm gonna hold his leg up so that his leg, his foot straightens just to make it nice and easy for us to get through that coat. Um, if I also need to, I'm gonna go in multiple directions. So once I've gone down the coat, I'm gonna go up, put his leg down and we're gonna go up. And then I'm also gonna go to the side. So to make sure we get all the way in through all of this coat. Uh, we're also then going to make sure that we separate the coat as such and get all the way to skin level. So we can do it in lines and work our way up to make sure that we're going to get all the way through the coat. And all the way to skin level. Often clients say to me, oh, but I brush my dog all the time. What they're actually doing is just brushing the top. You're not actually getting all the way through to this skin level, okay? And it is really important that you do so. It's also important that you do pay particular attention to, un I mean, Teddy's a Bedlington, so he doesn't have any tail hair. Um, but if he did, you would pay particular attention and go underneath the brush here. I would hold the tail if he had hair, and I would then go to the side and then go to the opposite side. And that way we're making sure, because often dogs are matted here, because they'll try and put their tail down because they don't like it. The other thing that's really important is when you are grooming your dogs at home, that you notice that I've put Teddy up on a table. It is really important that you put your dog up on a table and not have your dog in your lap on the couch. That's probably the number one no-no um, with brushing your dogs because they know they can run away. Teddy knows here that he can't run away and he can't get away from me. So you can see how depressed he is. He, he doesn't want to look. <laughs> Naughty Teddy, come here, baby. So I'm just going to turn him around and we're going to do his little head. Come here, baby. Good boy. Good boy, Teddy. Okay. So we're going to also do his head. Now he's got a lot of hair here on his head because of that's the Bedlington look. So again, I'm going to make sure that I'm getting all the way through and we can co uh, brush him in multiple directions. Okay. So we are going to mist over his coat. So now you might be asking, wondering, sorry, what I've got in my spray bottle. So I obviously keep my spray bottle, in which case um, you can't just use normal water because it gets bacteria within 24 hours. So if you're going to keep the water, or in this case, I've got a 10 cent piece worth of um, dog conditioner, 
uh, in distilled water. So it has to be distilled water, not demineralized and not normal uh, tap water so that you don't get bacteria. Um, and then you're able to keep it. So I just use this uh, all the time. So all you guys with long haired dogs or, you know, uh, cavoodles, etc., labradoodles in teddy bear styles, always recommended that you use a spray. Come here, Bobby. So also I'm going to hold his leg up and brush him underneath his leg here and under this section. This is a friction area here. You can see on this side. So under here is a friction area because obviously when he walks, it rubs. So I would stretch his leg out and brush all the way under here. Now, obviously you're gonna brush lightly because it's um, a, a tender spot, but you need to make sure that you do get all the way. Now, if he didn't like getting his legs brushed, for example, because I know a lot of you have dogs that don't like their legs getting brushed, I would make sure that I then did his front legs in particular um, and feet in particular more than anything. I would make sure then that I would get this dog on the table every single day and do two minutes. Quick brushes and then put him down, give him a big treat, tell him how amazing he is. And I can guarantee you by the end of at least two to three weeks, that dog is just standing there and going, okay, mum, no worries, I'll let you brush my feet. Even though I hate it, I'm still gonna let you do it because I know I'm gonna get love and I'm gonna get treats afterwards. Um, I can't really see very many dogs that are going to um, resist, except for obviously some of the, my beautiful dogs that I do that are super aggressive. Um, they will obviously have an issue with it. Uh, in which case, if you've got a dog like that, I would suggest that you um, invest in a muzzle for yourself and don't let the dog get away with it. If he was pulling on his leg, I would hold his leg until he stops. The minute he stops, then I would let him have his leg back. Okay, because what we need to do is not reward bad behavior. So even if he wants his leg back, I'm not ready to give him his leg back. So he doesn't get to choose, I do. It's really important. It's like raising a toddler. You've got to make them do what you want them to do kindly and nicely, and then you'll get the rewards that you're after. Okay, so when we are grooming, once we've brushed and we've brushed all the way through the coat in multiple directions, we are then going to finish off with the comb. So the reason we do that is so that we can see that we're getting all these knots out. So if you can see, the brush didn't get them all out, but now the comb is going to. Don't know if any of you can see that but there's the knots that have just come out. So we separate most of the hair with a brush first, and then we finish off with a comb. Now always to make sure that you brush and comb your dogs first before you wash them. So if you're gonna wash your own dog, um, that's okay, but you are better off having a dirty dog and mat free than a clean matted dog. So please, before you wash your dog, you make sure that you brush and comb it fully to make sure that there's no knots or mats and then you can wash and dry him and then give him a brush over again. If I was washing this dog and I couldn't get a particular mat out, I would make sure that when I wash and condition him, that I put extra conditioner in the area that had a knot and I would sit there and tease it out with a comb, just like you would do if you had a knot in your hair. It is exactly the same. So I'm just teasing this knot out here. It is exactly the same for us as it is for them, okay? So really important that you do that. 